Hey, what's going on guys? It's Noah McCrow. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm uh, Noah and I like adventure. I like travel. I like exploring. I work on RVs, so it's the perfect combination. I like to fix things myself. And uh, right now I have my own RV repair business. Today it's Saturday. It's beautiful out in Western Washington. We're here in Puyallup, which is a city uh, just outside of Seattle on the south side. We have the tool set up, ready to go. And we also got this RV we're working on. We're gonna do a water test today. I did an inspection. It was just a few photos and it was for a warranty company, but the dealer actually needed this warranty to go through. And so when I told him what I saw wrong with it, he ended up hiring me. So I got paid for the inspection for that, um, you know, for the photos, for uh, what I was hired to come out here initially to do. And then now I have a job to fix some leaking plumbing underneath the kitchen here. Really nice coach inside, but yeah, there's some minor maintenance uh, that needs to be done in this. <laughs> but I turn on the water pump and these, you know, water pumps, uh, if you've ever been around RVs, they kind of, and you'll hear it, it'll kind of, I don't want to make a funny sound here. Like it'll, and then it'll stop. It'll go, and then it'll stop, right? It built pressure and then it stops. But when I turn on the water pump, what happened was it started going full blast and then all of a sudden I heard water underneath the sink just dropping just flowing right out underneath the sink so once i saw that i said hey look there's a water problem we got a plumbing issue so we're gonna do a water test we're gonna let it build pressure after we fix that plumbing leak whatever it is could be some pecs could be something as simple as a loose fitting imagine that so i went to a, a trade school and i'm very happy that i'm working in this field because i'm supporting something i really believe in I want families to get out, go camping. I want them to go hit the road, explore. This is something that um, is really a part of American culture, is RVing. It's something that uh, hasn't been accessible to everybody in the past, but it is expensive to get into. But the people that do fortunately get into it, uh, they find that there's a lot of maintenance, there's a lot of problems with these RVs because they're cheaply made. And it's also unfortunate that it's an American product. This is made in America, all these RVs, are made in America, 100%. They don't make them in China, they don't make them in Mexico and ship them over. So I wish there was a little more pride in producing a product that's made in America, but that's where I come in as an RV repairman. I can still come in, repair what's wrong with it, help the customer understand the systems, what's going wrong with it so that they can fix it. And uh, for the DIYer, if you ever wanna give me a call and ask me, hey, what's going on with my rig? Um, hopefully I can have an answer, and if not, um, I, I'm always open to learning, even on a job. I don't charge people for learning. If a job's only supposed to take two hours and it takes me five, I don't charge you an extra three hours because I'm learning. It's kind of noisy, there's a highway behind me. Um, but like I was saying, I'm very happy to be in this industry now because it's something I believe in. I want people to get out and go explore, go camping. And that's what RVing is about. And then on the, on the flip side of this, Housing is so expensive now that people are moving into RVs like these behind me. You got a class C, you got a couple class A's, they're older. And again, there's a lot of maintenance items with those. So it's a great industry if you're able to, you know, master the basics of all the trades. Uh, but some of these can get pretty complex. So I paid around 12 grand to go to a trade school in Texas near Dallas. And afterwards I found a job because places are hiring for RV technicians to cover my basic bills. And then on the side, I'm able to charge 150 to show up for a service call fee that keeps my truck on the road. And that's for a single issue. And then 150 an hour is my labor rate. So for me to just show up, it's one hour minimum and the service call fee. So it's $300 just to show up for that single hour. And that usually covers the diagnosis and then trying to fix it in that first hour. It's crazy because I went to the trade school. I got a full-time job right out of the gate. Um, I moved cross country and then I haven't done any marketing. I haven't done any groundwork besides put some business cards out on the desk at some campsites. But then again, I've only had a few calls, but the biggest thing is that my email, my contact information is on the NR or sorry, the RVTAA, the RV technician association of America database online. So people see that I'm a certified RV technician because I went through a training program. I'm certified. I didn't go get dealership training. I can troubleshoot electronics, I can troubleshoot appliances, and I know how to repair things, the actual source of the problem. So that itself, in itself, that database has been getting me clients. I don't have to do work because 
people are already calling me. It almost feels wrong because I haven't done anything, but I have all these people calling. So it's great. I'm really enjoying the work because I can go to work. I can learn a whole lot. I get my bills covered full time. And then after work, I still do the same thing, except now I'm doing it for myself and I make all the money. So it's really setting me up to go full time on my own as an RV technician who can travel um, in whichever area I want to realistically. And I'm really excited about that. Poor banana is just frying in the sun. I need to eat this. Um, dude, <laughs> my window is actually broken into um, yesterday and I had my tools stolen. So I had to go to Harbor Freight and go buy uh, some things just to replace some power tools. Like I got an impact gun and a couple other things because I can't afford the Milwaukee. I'm spending 2,500 bucks at Home Depot for brand new Milwaukee. I've slowly accumulated stuff used, but yeah, someone jacked all my stuff. I've been working like 50 hours a week at my full-time job and uh, I've just been so slammed with business. And then on top of that, I got my own appointments. So I want to take you guys along for these appointments, but I need my phone as I'm doing things. So I will probably be investing in a camera at some point, but here's a good look of the outside of the rig. Everything's locked up unless they didn't lock it last night. But crazy enough, I'll tell you this story too. i had been keeping in touch with the lady who needed her black tank, which for those of you unfamiliar with RVs, that's where all the number two and number one goes. And then you have your gray tank, your gray holding tank. That's where like sink water goes, shower water, that kind of stuff. Just dirty water that's used, but no sewage, no toilet paper. The black tank is the one you don't want to spill on you, okay? I've been keeping in touch with this lady via email. She found me on the RVTAA locator website. It had been a few weeks. She ordered a black tank. She said it was empty. She needed it replaced because it was leaking. I get there. Sorry for all the road noise again. I can't control that. I get there. It's a third full. It is full. We got solids coming out. I'm like, I need a bucket. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just filling buckets. And they're standing in horror because they're... Their RV was not empty. Their RV black tank was not empty. And I was sitting there just unloading this tank as I'm trying to remove it as well. So I get it out. I um, repair the issue, ended up not being what we thought it was gonna be. Well, end of the story being, at the end of that, she was so happy because she could not move her RV. It was permanently um, parked with, um, how do I explain this? There's foam insulation around the bottom of it. it they made the RV a living quarters on the property so they couldn't tow it away very easily and that's where I come in as a mobile tech my company probably would have charged 2500 bucks for what I did I got out of there I made 770 bucks and I was there for three hours so afterwards and she paid me cash she was so happy like she was extremely thankful I got out there that I fixed the issue and like I've, I've never had that experience where someone is just so thankful. I was there and just so happy and I was well paid for the work I did. And I did the work as good as I could have. Every opportunity I get, every job is a blessing from God. And I believe that. So I do the best work I can and it's even better when the client is happy. And so it's just been a long time since I've had that. And I'm looking forward to more people just being extremely happy for me to just show up. Uh, because I do answer the phone, I do show up for my appointments, and those are the simple things, but apparently not everybody does that in this industry either. Again, there's so much room for opportunity. Um, but ultimately, that's what I got, guys. I think the client's gonna be showing up here in a second anyway, so I just thought I'd get on here and make a little Saturday morning video for y'all um, before I wrap up this plumbing issue, get paid for my hour or maybe more of work. Um, if there's anything else, drop it in the comments, any questions, whatever, I don't care. I'll get to the comments when I can. I don't know when I'll get to uploading this video. Hopefully soon, because it's been about a week, almost two weeks since I made a video. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to have more opportunities to make some videos and uh, share some more of this with you guys, because it's really exciting stuff. Um, I love the nomadic life. I love adventure. I love camping. I love just being outside, man. And that's what this is all about. And um, I love the the part where I get to help somebody provide a solution and then I can share what I know and share what I've learned online with you guys as well. So again, this is Noah, uh, Odyssey Mobile RV Repair in Western Washington. You can give me a call at 360-202-9719 or submit your appointment request online on my website, seattlemobilerverepair.com. All right, see you guys next time.